Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. As the title of this video suggests, these 10 tips are for early on in your game to get you used to Armored Core 6 and help you crush the first chapter. Once you're familiar with the basics of combat and you've unlocked more options for your AC, my advanced tips video will be coming out soon, if not already by the time you see this video, which will help you take your skills to the next level and tackle some of the extremely tough later game missions. To accompany these tips, I do have a bunch of boss guides and mission guides on the way, but please let me know in the comments if you're struggling with a particular boss or mission. I have completed the game three times by now and got all endings, and if you know me, you know that my absolute favourite thing in the world is to be able to help people out. So please let me know and I will do my best to help. And as we're getting into tip number one, if you like the sound of what you've heard so far, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more Armored Core 6 content. And with that being said, let's move into tip number one, how to use multi-lock. As we're going into the first tip, I just want to stress that this one is exceptionally long, but honestly, stick with it because it is truly so important. You'll thank me when you get back in the seat of your AC and start smashing everything up. So as we're flying over to this group of enemies, let me explain to you what I actually mean. Because you're probably thinking, well, Dom, the game has already explained multi-locking to me. Of course, I already know what multi-locking is. But there is so much more to it that the game doesn't tell you. And because of that, at first, you can really undervalue or completely misuse missiles. So as we're paused here with this one unaware enemy in view, you'll see there are two yellow bars either side of him. One completely full with the number three and one half full. That's because I do currently have two different missile packs on my AC and I am currently charging the pack of 10 missiles on my right shoulder. And that means that bar is roughly 50% charged so far. Now you need to hold this button down until that bar is completely full. If you let go early, what will happen is all 10 of your rockets will fire at that one target and they will fire with far reduced accuracy, depending on the guidance stat in the parts screen. However, if we now progress forward just a smidge, you'll see that that bar is fully charged and now we have highlighted six enemies in range and they are all automatically being tracked by my missiles. It really is that simple on the surface. But now let's talk about a few more nuances. So firstly, as we're paused here, initially I thought with the multi-lock, you had to hold it down and hover over each target you wanted to lock onto. However, I now know that of course isn't the case. The two criteria that need to be met to ensure that your missiles will lock on and hit your targets are firstly, they need to be within the weapon's effective range. Again, this is another stat you can find in the parts, and most missiles are going to have an effective range, at least early game, of around 450 to 650 meters. They do also have an ideal range, and if enemies are too close, it can go a little bit screwy. But as you can see, the closest mech to me at the moment is around 240 meters away, which means the furthest mech is probably only around 500 meters away, meaning all six of them are well within my effective range. And that is why the multi-lock has highlighted and locked onto all of them simultaneously. Now, the next thing you need to ensure is that they all stay in your field of vision. If I was to point my camera down now, the two on the balcony above would stop being targeted. So in a nutshell, all you need to do is be in range of your enemies, make sure you can see them, and then hold down the respective trigger to charge your weapon and make sure it's fully charged before you release. Now, there are still many things that can increase or reduce the accuracy of your missiles, but I don't want to bog you down with loads and loads of details when this is supposed to be a beginner tips. So for now, I will just say, obviously, the faster your opponents are, the more likely they are to dodge out of the way. But you can offset that with a really good FCS, which is a part, and that stands for the fire control system. You can get different FCS parts that will help your automatic guidance at low, medium and long ranges. So make sure you're using some good missiles with a really good guidance stat and make sure your FCS aligns with your build. Once you've done that and you now know how to effectively use multi-lock, you will be obliterating waves of smaller enemies with literally the press of one button. So now that you understand all of that, let me tell you two last very important things about missile lock-on. 
Next up, you can lock on with multiple missile packs at a time. And by the end of the game, should you want to do this, though I really don't advise it, you can have a missile launcher equipped in all four of your weapon slots. So you can hold down L1, L2, R1 and R2 all at the same time and have all four of your missile packs readying to lock on to different enemies and then just rain hell down upon them. For small groups of enemies, it's glorious to see. It is truly amazing. But for bigger guys, and especially for bosses, it's very inefficient. So it is fun. Maybe try it out just for the fun of it. But I don't advise using that as your main proper build. And the other thing I should mention with missiles that probably goes without saying, but just in case you weren't expecting them to work like this, terrain can and will stop your missiles. For example, for the most part, when you unlock vertical launchers, they are far more accurate than regular launchers. But if you try and use them in enclosed spaces, they will just keep hitting the ceiling, and effectively you've got one weapon slot that is completely pointless. So make sure even once you've locked on and started firing your missile barrage, don't then duck down behind some terrain or get stuck under a ceiling because all of your rockets will just start hitting the wall. Seems very simple, but it is very easy to forget in the middle of battle. Now, with all of that information, you should be an absolute killing machine with your missile launchers. So let me give you nine more tips that are going to help improve the rest of your gameplay as well. Don't worry, the first tip was definitely the longest and most complex of the lot. Tip number two is very simple. Make sure you are always using scan because it can detect hidden enemies and help you avoid some very nasty ambushes. Your scan duration and distance is purely dictated by your head part. So make sure you're looking at the advanced stats when you're picking your head. And on missions with lots of enemies, make sure you opt for one with quite a large scan radius. Apart from when you are replaying missions and trying to go for S rank, there is absolutely nothing stopping you from doing missions as slow as you possibly want and being very cautious and careful the whole time. For that reason, scan before you go around every corner because so frequently there are enemies lying in wait. And not only can you scan them and help to prepare for the ambush, but depending on the weapons that you have, for instance, if you have split missiles which can shoot round corners, you can lock onto enemies that you have scanned, even if they're not in your field of vision, and you can start preemptively attacking them whilst they're still unaware of you. And that's a little bonus tip for you, actually. When enemies are unaware of you, they will take increased damage from your first attack. So you can really line up some juicy hits as long as you're being cautious and scanning everywhere. Tip number three is quite counterintuitive compared to what one of the tutorials very early on tells you to do. And I'm basically going to advise you not to use Assault Boost too much. Assault Boost is the one that makes you zoom at the speed of light towards your next destination. And you activate this just by pressing L3 on the controller. There are some situations, of course, where it is fantastic when you're traversing a wide open space or trying to efficiently use your EN so you can get to the top of a particularly high mountain or building. However, Assault Boost can leave you very vulnerable in combat. Some weapons, your repair kits and other actions cannot be done whilst you're Assault Boosting. And it will take a second to get in and out of this stance as well, which leaves you very vulnerable, especially against certain bosses. So just make sure you've always got your regular boost on, which you can turn on and off with circle on the controller, or which will automatically engage every time you quick boost with square. And you just want to use boost and quick boost for the most part in combat. The exception being if you've just staggered an enemy and you want to charge up to them to get in one more pulse sword swing, but even then, use this very carefully, because as I say, assault boost leaves you really vulnerable in combat. You will realise how important this next tip is, especially when you get into chapter 2 and chapter 3, and this is to conserve your ammo. At first, your ammo supplies can feel kind of limitless, and then when you get towards the end of the first chapter and the start of the second, especially when you get to the mission Infiltrate Grid 086, the first time you hear weapon ammunition for left shoulder at 10%, you're like, what the fuck? How? How? 10%? What is this? And it can be very scary realizing that if you run out of ammo, what the hell are you going to do? 
For that reason, I strongly recommend bringing at least one very large ammo reserve missile launcher on pretty much every mission with you and using tip number one using that multi-lock to take out big groups of small enemies with just one attack it's the best way to conserve your lower ammunition weapons for fights when you really need them and when i'm talking about low ammunition weapons i don't just mean grenade launchers with 30 shots or laser pistols with 60 shots even your assault rifles that have like 600 rounds, that's not that much when you get to these late game really long missions. Because if you think about it, with 600 rounds and 30 round mags, that's still only 20 rounds and some of these missions can go for half an hour. So trust me, get used to being very efficient with your ammo sooner rather than later and it will really help you in the late game. That being said, this ties in perfectly with tip number five, and this is to use checkpoints to your advantage. Again, replaying missions is the exception to what I'm about to say, but when you get to a checkpoint, if you die, aside from losing some money at the end of the mission, there's no other downside. Yes, your repair costs will increase, so you will earn less money at the end of the mission, but you'll respawn exactly where you were with full health and full ammo. So if you get halfway through a mission and you're running low and you really want to explore some side areas to make sure you're not missing any battle logs, there's no shame in literally getting yourself killed so you can respawn with all your ammo and health and go and mop up the rest of the mission. An even more efficient way to do this, but you can't use this tactic in every mission, is to try and hold out until you find a resupply point. And really this resupply point is to prepare you for the boss fight ahead. But because this is such a huge mission, if you are wanting to try and find all the battle logs at once, you can defeat all the enemies that you're comfortable with doing, and when your supplies are looking really low, come here, resupply, then you can head back and mop up the rest of the remaining level. Obviously, it does mean you're going to go into the boss with very low supplies. You'll probably die the first time, but you've already done the rest of the level now. Doesn't matter, you've got a checkpoint, you can just respawn and do it again. Next up for tip number six is two very easy ways to get loads of money so that you can buy all of the gear that you want to try out. Firstly, every single thing that you buy can be sold for 100% value. So if you buy a weapon or a new head part and you realize you hate it and you will never use it, you can sell it again for 100% of the cost. And then later on, if you realize, oh God, actually, I really wanted it, you can just buy it back. There's no downside to just constantly buying and selling. That being said, the second way is definitely much more efficient, and this is to replay missions. If you find a mission that you're really good at, one that you find really fun, or just one that gives you lots of money, you can replay this as many times as you want until you can eventually afford everything in the shop. And you might be thinking, but Dom, if I can just buy and sell things at will, why would I need to farm that much money that I could then buy everything in the shop? Well, if you die in a mission, you can go to the assembly and swap out your loadout and try again with a different build, but you can't buy mid-mission. So if you realize, oh, actually this laser rifle would have been amazing in this mission, but you didn't buy it, you're going to have to quit out of the mission, buy the rifle, and then do the whole mission again. Especially late game, it's unfeasible to say that you can buy everything in the shop. I think you would need something like 60 or 70 million credits. But using the buy and sell strategy and replaying missions, you can definitely buy a really good chunk of the equipment that you think you might use. And then when you go into the next mission and you do inevitably die, because you will, it's a very tough game, at least you have the option then to change out your build without having to start again. This next tip kind of encompasses every other element of your gameplay in Armored Core 6, and that is to always keep an eye on your EN. EN stands for energy, and it basically works the same as stamina in most games. It is very bad if you let your energy run out mid-fight, because you will no longer be able to dodge, you are likely to be staggered very quickly and take a ridiculous amount of damage. You need to always keep moving in Armored Core, so always keep your eye on your energy, and try and make sure you never let it fully deplete. As much as you want to try and do lots of aerial combat in this game to dodge quite a few different attacks, your energy will only recharge really quickly if you are on the ground. So if your energy is really low, just immediately drop to the ground. Stop holding L3 forwards, stop boosting, 
just take all your fingers off all your buttons and let your armored core drop to the floor because this is the quickest way to do so and as soon as you hit the floor your energy will replenish nearly instantly and then you can get going again tip number eight comes into play once you unlock the first set of arena matches you'll start to get os chips and you can now permanently upgrade certain features of your armored core one of the things you can do which initially sounds amazing is weapon swapping tip number eight is to hold off weapon swapping until you get to at least around c rank for the arena just in case like me you don't fully grasp exactly what weapon swapping does it will allow you the option to completely remove your two shoulder weapons and equip two more arm weapons at first i thought this sounded amazing because in certain situations just having a plethora of assault rifles and shotguns along with your pulse blade is amazing the problem is it completely disables two of your slots your shoulder buttons, instead of being used to fire the weapons, just switch them out into your main hand, so at any one time you can only use two weapons. This can be great later on in the game when you unlock more weapons and you start to be able to wield things like missile launchers and pulse guns in your hands. But right at the start of the game, when you don't have many weapons unlocked, you don't want to lose the ability to use things like shields and rocket launchers just for the sake of having an extra assault rifle or pistol. So stay away from this one for now and don't waste your OS chip on it. Tip number nine kind of goes hand in hand with tip number two, but it's a bit more specific. And this is to stealth whenever you can. I mentioned using the scanning to seek out enemies so that you're not being ambushed. Well, this takes it one step further, and this is basically teaching yourself how to ambush your enemies. As I touched on briefly, if you get the drop on enemies, they will have the unaware status, and you do ridiculous amounts more damage to them. As you see here, getting the drop on groups of enemies, charging up my multi-lock, and then obliterating them in one hailstorm of rockets not only saves your health and saves your ammunition, but it also just makes you feel so damn cool. It's not often you get to be stealthy in a giant mech, but in the occasions that you can, do, because it's so good. And talking of stealth in, that ties in very nicely with our last tip for this video, and that is to take your time. Health and ammo is far more limited than you think, especially because you are handheld for the first few missions. Focus on stealth, focus on dodging attacks, focus on negating ambushes. Use all of the other tips in this video and take your time in missions and take your time in combat. Have at least one weapon with a big ammo reserve such as multi-lock missiles to take down groups of smaller enemies. Get used to when you can and can't rush in with your melee weapons because they do leave you vulnerable but they are fantastic for staggering your enemies. And just be patient. The more I played Armored Core, the more I started to realize it was kind of like Mech Sekiro. It's so much closer to Sekiro than it is to Dark Souls. And primarily what I mean by that in this context is that there isn't many options to upgrade your actual character. It's not like if you're dying too much you can just bump up your vigor from 20 to 40. Or if this pistol isn't doing enough damage you can bump up your dex from 30 to 50. There is an element of that of course with switching out your parts and with your OS upgrades, but for the most part, you just need to learn the enemy's movesets, be patient, keep your cool, and put everything to good use that you have learnt. Trust me, when you do and when you get over that hurdle and it really all starts to click, it's one of the most satisfying feelings in the world and I am completely addicted now. Anyway, that's it for my top 10 beginners tips. Make sure you keep an eye out for the advanced tips as well, which will help you with your late game. And subscribe to keep an eye out for many, many more Armored Core videos in the near future, including lore, story overview, faction overview, boss fights, endings, tips, tricks, reviews, you name it. I have got you covered. And with that, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.